That's what they're doing. Type of depiction of uh, some scene from Egypt, apparently, and uh, it is a, just a misrepresentation in every way of how the people looked. Here you have a public display of uh, a white man and a white woman misrepresenting the culture of ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt as they uh, uh, apparently are talking about some kind of ritual, but it has nothing to do with evidence, it has nothing to do with reality, it has to do with the fake and phony presentation of how the people looked and um, what their temperament might have been. You're not going to have any man screaming out like this in some madness. You know, this is a... So this is the kind of uh, falsification we have to be, uh, be, be, be careful about. Dirty hands, like mere menials. Lies and misdemeanors. Liar. Oh, sir. Liar. <laughs> I will open it to you. That we had to wander through a land plunged into chaos. Lies. At Narton. At Narton. This man at Narton. Was a black man. They brought. Egypt down to the depths. Enemies massed on her borders. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the powerful. He and his queen, Nefertiti, who took to herself a new name and become co ruler of Egypt alongside the Pharaoh. Lies! This was evil. This was wicked. Because the, you know, the BBC and uh, Discovery Channel, they have a version very similar to this, where all of the images of the royal family members, where all of the high priests, where all of the citizens are usually depicted as white and light-skinned, other than the hard laborers. Those that involve involved hard labor and uh, a lot of physical work, they seem to be the Nubians, the ones that are at the lowest level in society. This is not how things were, but that's how they, they are portrayed by the BBC and the Discovery Channel and these news outlets because of the outrageous propaganda. So this is, uh, this is ridiculous to have this kind of nonsense. No one in the world can justify these individuals portraying themselves as, as ancient people from Kemet. If they want to portray Rome or Greece, do that. But to do that here is the most outrageous insult to the intelligence of people around the world who've come to see an authentic exhibit, but coming in, they have to be inundated with unbelievable propaganda. Okay, this is a, this is the tomb of of, of uh, Ur Enrin Ptah, the great official, and we can see him sitting on the throne with his staff of authority and uh, what's maybe a papyrus scroll. But one of the things I wanted to point out is uh, this this phenomenon of the dark legs, colorless face. And one thing I neglected to point out is that you see the middle figure here. You notice this dark coloration, which is consistent with all the other images of these men as they are in procession to the right. But notice the central figure. Notice how a modern museum official have uh, reconstructed his face. As you can see that this is light and white and is not natural at all. If you look closely at the nose, it has been recarved from the top of the nose and the, the bottom and to give it a point, uh, a point to it, an aquiline appearance. And this face has nothing to do with how the original figures would have, the figure would have looked like. If you look at every one of these other images, they have the fleshy African nose and nostril, which is obvious for anybody that has any, even close to 20-20 vision. Look at the coloration of the body and the face in this one. Look how unnaturally white it is by people who have deliberately de-Africanized and de-melanized this image and gave him a pointed, unnatural, and completely absurd look. This is the kind of thing that takes place after discovery. It can't be any more obvious than this. There's nothing natural could have, could, uh, have uh, brought about this radical racial facial change other than someone who's engaged in deliberate fraud and deceit. That's exactly what we have here, and this is very common. And notice that the conspirators here, they didn't change the image of the, the men on the, on the left or the men on the right. They didn't bother them. The average person is going to look at this and see the great official, and they're going to look, what, front and center. Front and center, and that's where 
you see the uh, the fraud and the phony uh, activity that goes on behind be, behind the scenes. This is what we're dealing with here is uh, a deliberate falsification of evidence by museum officials, not by somebody in antiquity. And no one in antiquity would have any motive to alter image. They're not concerned about that. If they went to destroy something, they destroy the whole scene. They don't carefully change facial features and erase the melanin content. So when you come here, point that out to people who, uh, who have a fantasy that, that, uh, that black people are just paranoid. It's not paranoid, this is the obvious fact. The Sekhmet represents a, a, a lioness, a very fierce lioness. So Sekhmet is the, de the uh, deity that carried out the uh, the will of Ra, the great deity Ra. So there's a great text called The Destruction of Mankind where people were mad at Ra because they felt he was an old ruler. So because Ra, Ra got mad at, at the people, it was Sekhmet that went about destroying people on the earth. But nevertheless, nevertheless her name Sekhmet means the powerful. That's what her name means, literally the powerful one. And images of Sekhmet would line temples many, many temples, you see images of Sekhmet. It, it, if you don't see any other images, you'll see an image of Sekhmet in the temple. She's very, very prominent, very, very powerful. So when you see images of her, this is one of the most powerful images, female, feminine images that you can find. And in the uh, Egyptian Museum in Rome, this is the place that I recall seeing the largest number of Sekhmet statues. I mean, they just have tons of them. So this is a very, very powerful figure, and she uh, she was also associated with the uh, with the medical arts as well, with health. So that Sekhmet would be associated with childbirth and with health. So physicians would work with and consult Sekhmet because of her wisdom and her power of healing. So she had many roles, but her role of being a powerful one that would uh, carry forth. Uh, different orders uh, and working in, in, um, in tangent with Ra and also with childbirth and healing. But uh, Sekhmet is very, very powerful. So I didn't mean to pass this, in, but it was a lot to show, but this is very, uh, uh, very typical of uh, the images of Sekhmet. Notice he has a lotus flower in hand. This is a very powerful image. Notice the Ankh in hand. When you have an image with the Ankh in hand, then usually it's a deity. Because, now think about it, the Ankh means what? Eternal life. So the Ankh literally means eternal life. So those images, uh, th those figures that represent eternal principles, deities, in other words, goddesses and gods, they usually have, guess what? An Ankh in their hand. Not anybody is carrying an Ankh around on any uh, paintings or with statues. It is somebody with extremely high status. Because this actually means eternal life. This is why you find deity after deity after deity that holds the ump, because it, it is an indication of their, their um, eternal stature. And that's very powerful. So Sekhmet, very, very significant. By the way, this is a, a, the disk of the sun, and Ra would be associated with the sun, right? The deity Ra. Now, don't read people. They say uh, Ra was the sun god. No, he's not the sun god, but... Ra has uh, such particular radiant power that the only thing we can, we can uh, associate that power with is the sun, which is the most dominant force in our universe. So Ra was not the sun. The sun was a, uh, it, it had the same powers of Ra. That's why they would associate Ra with the sun. And so was Sekhmet associated with, not only uh, with Ptah, uh, the name Ptah, but also with Ra and the sun disk is associated with Ra, and you see the, uh, the cobra here. So these are some very powerful symbols. Notice you don't see any uh, nipples that are prominent either, right? If they, they, they may be there, but they don't stick out like the other lady. Uh, how's it going? So you've been studying Kimmy, huh? A little bit. My dad. Yeah. That's good. See the uh, statues. We have a Saturday school. Oh yeah. And we teach some uh, some of the children. Okay, this gallery here has uh, a lot of the writing. 
So the Medunetcher inscription. So you have Medunetcher, you, you have...